This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. This job would be great if it wasn't for the fucking customers. We're always this stupid and you take lessons. Just calm down. Oh, fuck you! You can't handle the truth! This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. In other words, be nice, asshole. with me all night i made up a grocery list he's going to sam's and instead of eggs i wrote baby chickens <laughs> milk i wrote cow baby titty chicken. cow titty juice <laughs> the flesh of moo moos <laughs> the flesh of moo moos oink <laughs> uh, uh what else did i write on there oh go go juice um what's go go juice coffee oh um <laughs> i wrote Okay, I can get behind that one. Receptacles of clear liquid. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, what else did I write? I wrote all kinds of shit on there, like like just, it's a coded grocery list. Right, from World right. War we II. need bread, so I wrote oh, risen yeast. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so welcome to another episode of Q is in Cucumber. I'm Lar Mack. And I'm Tanya Edwards. Okay, so um, I got to give a shout out uh, to Kevin Kunsel, who, or Kunsel, I'm once again, you can I like tell me, <laughs> if you can tell me how to say your name, I love you. Um, he's, I will officially classify him as one of our super fans. Every time I post a new episode, cause it goes on YouTube as well. Uh-huh. He's commenting on YouTube like, Oh, my Saturday fix. <laughs> <He's all excited. laughs> awesome. So, um, and Kevin also said, cause we were kind of going back and forth here. I could not believe the updates on homes from our oh, last yeah, episode yeah, yeah. with the whole yeah. pregnancy thing yeah. and losing a database. <laughs> Like once again, that's a that's a that's that's okay. So you know, pregnancy brain is a real thing, right? She was not pregnant, but you oh, okay, yeah. So that's what I was thinking afterwards. Like maybe it was pregnancy brain. That's what she's gonna blame it on. But no, that's no, this clearly... happened like back in like twenty seventeen right. before she shit. even decided to come up with this maniacal scheme to keep out of prison. Exactly. Yeah. Um, he said I could not believe. What the is your defense? On My ovaries. My ovaries. <laughs> They have little guns to defend me. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew. All right. Uh, Gross and so bankrupt. Um, Though I was happy with the tattoo updates, and he says he's a sketch artist. So I want to see some of your stuff, Kevin. Send it over. Yeah, because, okay, so here's my thing. So every year on my anniversary, I'm going to get another flower, another sparrow, or a butterfly. So anything that, like goes with my chest tattoo that would be really cool because Mm -hmm. like i already have a an appointment scheduled for january okay um to get your next one to get my next one awesome for my two years so freaking yeah every so i'm just gonna be covered in all kinds of random shit i love it i really want you to go out in public and i want to be there i think we all because we're all starting to get you know our vaccine appointments and stuff and as i'm done as a group of friends we've talked about like what we want to do because right. we're used to getting together throughout the year at very specific times. We do our Christmas, we do our Wiener roast, we do our Oktoberfest, we do Carly's, Carly's birthday. birthday. Yeah, like we do all of these specific things that we have not been able to do, yeah. obviously, over the past year. And I really, really, really want to get together and go somewhere where you can take your top off and just walk <laughs> around. I really want to see it. So I will take my shirt yes, off. And it's not bitch. illegal because I don't have nipples. So exactly. I can take my shirt off. So fuck, fuck them people. Off. So we love you, Kevin. Um, but Kevin specifically asked, he was like, do you guys do, are you guys still accepting emails for craziness? Um, and I realized we hadn't done an email episode yeah, in a minute. Yeah. And it's, I thought we, and I told him on the comments, like, we just haven't been getting that many. But then I was like, God, I started getting messages um, on the YouTube channel. Like, I sent one. Why haven't you read it? So I looked at oh. my spam, our spam folder. Ah. Everything was going into spam. Oh, Everything. excuse us and our raggedy technology. Thank you. Of so, the world. <laughs> so sorry. So we have a ton of awesome Yay. emails. Um, but before we get into the emails, I did want to discuss just real quick the scam that's going on right now on Facebook. Y'all, for real, my dad got straight up jacked. Like, it's this thing where you get a message from somebody, one of your friends, uh-huh. that says so-and-so just tagged you in a video. And you click on the video and the video doesn't do anything, right? Mm-hmm. 
And then they steal your credit card that's linked to your Facebook. Oh, so Jesus. So my dad had his had his debit card linked on Facebook mm-hmm. to support like charities and stuff that he likes and he donated to TJ's little like school thing with uh-huh. it and the whole nine, right? Before he could before he knew what happened, four thousand dollars gone. Wow. And it was just like, what? And he told me about it. Now, they also changed his email and his phone number on the account. So when he tried to change his password, it wouldn't. Locked him out. It took him two weeks, like, or a week to get I need to make sure I tell Granny about this because she's. (sighs) Yeah. I have. uh, Right. Yeah. So a few days later, I got one of those from one of my friends who her and I knew each other through grace Uh and it said she had tagged me in a video and I was like her and I have never been in a video together (laughs) right and then before I clicked on it my dad telling me about this right clicked and I was like oh shit no so I immediately messaged her did you send me a video because uh, you know yeah and immediately her Facebook was locked down but then all of our mutual friends Uh uh-huh they the ones that opened it, I started getting ones from them too. Oh, so and and one of them, Deb, you know Deb through Jess, yeah. Before she even knew what happened, they started draining money out of her account. Same thing. Oh my thing. god, y'all! If somebody is sending you a message that's saying somebody is tagging you on Facebook in a video, do not open it. You can open the message, but don't click on the video. Right? Oh, that's crazy. So I went through well, I don't, my password. Like, yeah, I, I don't. Like, oh, shit. Um, so if I don't know you on Facebook, no, then I don't accept messages from anybody. And then if it's something crazy like a video or something, you know, I, I very rarely respond to shit unless it's somebody who I keep in contact with, like Laura or the, the quality girls or something like that. Right. But yeah, I don't no. Uh, no. Cause I get all kinds of weirdos that message me. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, and they're like, hi, Tanya. Hi. Hi. Like, who are you? Yeah. And I even changed my name for, you know, personal reasons mm-hmm. on my Facebook. Right. <clears throat> um, so I'm not even listed under my real name anymore. Right. Yeah. All right. So we'll get into these emails. Oh, my God. These made my life. These were so much fun. Oh, I have oh to tell God. you about some of the cu- a customer service experience Sophia had at her job. What happened? So Sophia is a, is a receptionist part-time at a... Uh, it's a salon that they they charge like a shit ton of money, right? right it's over by the Broadmoor, you right. said, like super. Right, it's super. You know, it's 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 not. It's trendy. It's very. For those trendy. of you who don't live in Colorado Springs, the Broadmoor area is like the Beverly Hills, yeah, of yeah. Colorado. So, like. um, so it's called, and it's a great salon. I love it. It's called Eye Candy. Ooh, yeah. So it's 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 in a decent neighborhood, you know, and and they charge, you know, because women will pay two hundred dollars to get their hair highlighted, you know. So this lady came in and she wanted all this shit done to her hair, and it was pretty. uh, So apparently, she thought the lady that the stylist was taking too long. Mm -hmm. Um, she demanded that she wash it out partially through the process. And the stylist even told her, well, you're going to need a haircut after this because we're doing all these different processes and it's going to, you know, damage your hair. So we need to do a haircut. And she did the haircut. I mean, just got mad so much so that when the stylist was blowing out her hair, Uh um, she snatched the hair dryer from her. What? Cussed cussed everybody out. It it was just a whole thing, right? Sophia was sitting there like, holy shit. (laughs) What? what the fuck is like, going on? on? Right, right. So the lady left, didn't pay, <gasps> left. So the owner called the lady and she was like, hey, you know, I understand you're not happy. Come in and I'll do your hair. And she was like, well, I want it done now. She was like, well, I have clients right now. You know, I, I can schedule it this time. I'm not going to do this. Da, 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 da. She was like, and your stylist did this to me and did that to me. And the owner was like, actually, I have video cameras throughout this entire building. Right. And I went back and I looked at all of the video. We yeah. should be calling the police on you. Yeah. Because you snatched you the hair dryer. You yeah. walked out of here without paying. You threatened my employees. Like, I'm going to punch you in the face. I'm going to kick your ass. She sat outside the salon 
and acted a damn fool. I mean, and this isn't even the wow. first time. Some guy came in a couple of weeks ago. He was in the military, mm -hmm. and the top of his hair was real long, and he wanted a perm. I didn't know this was a thing, right? This is how long I've been out of doing hair. Dudes getting perms on the top of their heads, right? I oh, thought that went out in, like, okay. the 80s, but whatever. Yeah. Um, You want to look like a dick? Go right ahead. Yeah. Um, so this GI comes Free in. Have this fun. GI comes in, and he gets a perm. Golden rule of getting a perm. How long do you have to wait to wash your hair? Three days. Exactly. And we all know perms smell like rotten eggs, mm -hmm. right? So he calls, and he's like, yeah, my perm fell out. So they were like, well, come in. They look at his hair, and it was the next day. You're still smelling like an egg then, right? The stylist asked, did you wash your hair? He was like, no, I got it wet. She was like, well, you know, she smelled his hair, and she was like, well, it smells like shampoo. He was like, no, I just got it wet. So... He threw a fucking fit, brought his girlfriend up there to beat the girl up. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I mean, just acting like a total asshole. So I told I told Sophia's boss, and I was like, here's what you do. They found out, you know, he was in the military. Mm -hmm. I said, you call Fort Carson. Mm -hmm. You go to the post commander. There's a, there's a phone number for the post commander. Yeah. And you'll see how much trouble he gets in because now the post commander had to... Had to take time out of his fucking day to counsel this soldier On over a, a perm, perm. Oh and watch how, watch how much trouble this motherfucker gets into. Yeah, you can't do that shit when you're in the military. No, but, no, he uh -huh. shouldn't be getting a perm anyways. Right, but yeah, what? unless they've changed something. The but fuck? yeah, yeah, he went berserk. He sat outside in his car and was telling people, "Don't go in there. They're horrible." Oh, no, I mean, sir. yeah, yeah, it was a mess. <laughs> What's like I remember when I first started getting my nails done in my early 20s, going to a little nail salon down in, in uh, Widefield, uh -huh. right? And, you know, it's an Asian-run establishment, right? right? And there's it's about maybe like half full. There's like 10 of us in there maybe. Mm -hmm. But there's still like plenty of space for other people, yeah, right? And we're all just kind of sitting, but somehow, and this happens, I, I, you probably know this, but this happens a lot in nail salons where you'll see like the customers as a group start talking. Yeah. Right? And it happens a lot. You know, two people are getting a pedicure, a few people are getting their nails done, yeah. and everybody's kind of turned yeah. towards like just kind of bullshitting, yeah. right? I've had some of my best conversations with people in a nail salon that just crack you the fuck up, right? We're all sitting there chit-chatting, and this woman walks in, and you can just feel the energy in the room oh change. God. She is irate, and she's clearly, like, on the edge uh -huh. of just flipping out. And you can just feel it, and you can see everybody in the salon is like, hmm, right. we're just going to be quiet. Like <laughs> She seems really right. mad, right? And she starts... Not yelling at the nail tech, but like being very demanding. Right. Right. Like, you're going to fix this nail. Oh. It got fucked up and you're going to fix it. And it was like, whoa, okay. Right. Like, what the fuck happened to you? And w it's very quickly obvious, like, she's been in a fight. Right. Right. And she fucked up one of her nails. And it is like, hanging there oh. it, and she's got those long ones longer than yours yeah like down to like there right oh. it's about about three four inch nails right and it's bleeding uh -huh. and he she wants him to fix it first off <laughs> thank you you're bleeding you're bleeding. Like, I now, mean, I have broken nails down there into the meat. Absolutely. Like, me you too. You know, into the middle of my nail, but I've broken one down in that area, and that shit is painful. Absolutely. So I can tell you, I sure as hell, and I always wait until it kind of heals up after a couple of days, then go get it fixed, because trying you to do it on that to. raw meat. That, that chem <laughs> those chemicals. Oh. Right? So she, he's trying to help her. Right. Right. He's trying. And she's just getting more, and she keeps yanking her hand back and saying, that hurts. And everybody in the room is like, 
Bitch, you're wounded. Duh. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen right. here? You're putting chemicals on an open wound. And he keeps trying, and he doesn't speak English very well, right? Mm -hmm. But he keeps trying to gently, and he's very gentle with her. Mm -hmm. He's gently trying to explain to her, this no work. This is going to hurt. He, right. And they don't get, some right? just don't care. And she's like, just fix it. And it's like, okay. And then finally, once again, we're, we've all been talking. Mm -hmm. We're starting to kind of chit chat a little bit. Like the right. oxygen is slowly starting to come back in the room. But she's still making us all super tense. All of a sudden, he hit a spot. And she stood up and literally flipped over his entire nail station. Oh. And he jumped up. The wall was directly behind him. And he like pushed himself up against the wall. Uh -huh. So it didn't crush him. And she like, as she's walking out, she's like hitting all the other nail stations. She's uh -huh. like swiping everything off and throwing shit. And she's screaming and cursing. And he's just like, and that's when he went from being very gentle to just like, I called the police. And it was like, whoa. <sighs> all right. So let's get it started. This is from the Looney Canuck. <laughs> Looney. From Canada. A. E. What's up with y'all's ketchup chips? Those are weird. <laughs> Those are a little bit strange. Not gonna lie. Sophia loves them. Yeah. Do you see there's a ketchup packet shortage? My yes. dad is freaking out about it. Yes. This. Oh, and we're almost out of ketchup at my house. Oh my and so Sophia was like, I went to the store last night and I bought some ketchup. I was like, oh, calm down. Calm. Slow your roll. Yeah. Like, just breathe. Okay. So um, I say... Um, uh, so and so mail order this is a mail order company. Mm -hmm. um, my name is the Canuck. <laughs> the speaking. Canuck. How can I help? And the cus the caller says in a hesitant voice, "Hi, um, what do you guys do there, please?" <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Already starting off a little strange. <laughs> this is the speaker seems very confused but pleasant, so I'm not worried. <laughs> And I say, well, we make toy soldiers for tabletop games, ma'am. Is there something specifically you were looking for? Mm -hmm. Right? And the caller says, you see, my name is, he gives the name, and he says, or she says, and I work at Hot Chicks Video in California. Oh, okay. Like, And I say, uh, okay. <laughs> How are these two th together? Like, oh, I don't, you'll, oh, God. You'll understand it here in a second. It's funny. And I'm like, uh, and the caller says, see, we keep getting calls from kids who want orcs and confused grannies. And, and he, she continues. I chatted with the caller for a bit, and it turns out that their phone number and ours were essentially the same. Except for theirs is a 0800 number, and ours is a 1-800 number. This is an adult call. This adult call center was getting so many calls from people wanting to buy toy soldiers that they had to stop. Ugh. They literally changed their greeting. So they stopped answering the phone and just and saying, you know, hot chicks videos. And they're just answering the phone videos because so many people were calling children. Oh, my God. Were calling for toys. And they were like, what the fuck? And it took a while. To, so he was calling like, I wonder what this company does. Oh, they're trying to reach you. you you're right. Okay. I get it now. So now basically they have an agreement between the two companies. Like if somebody's calling. Wanting. <laughs> wanting hot chick videos. We're going to call. You know, you need to call this number. Right. They're right. calling for toys. You need to call this number. Uh, children's toys, <laughs> not children's adult toys. <laughs> Let's let's be specific. That one made me laugh. I like that one. Just like those are those calls that just make it like everybody in the situation is just kind of like we don't know what the fuck's going what's going on. on. Yeah, like I love those calls where it's like nobody was being a dick, nobody's being abusive. It's just it's just a little confusion. Just some confusion. Remember, we used to get calls for like. So I remember this one. This one time, it was early in the morning, I took a call, and it was for an airline credit card. Mm -hmm. And the lady was just pissed off because her flight got canceled or something. And after like five, ten minutes of me explaining to her, this is not the airline, this is the bank. <laughs> and remember, remember this that. one, this other agent that ended up being a supervisor later on whenever I went to quality. He was laughing so hard, and he used to say this to me all the time. Finally, I had to break it down. Ma'am, we're a bank. We don't have airplanes here. <laughs> and, the, and, the, 
from that point on, every time he would see me, he would be like, ma'am, we're a bank. We don't have airplanes here. <laughs> I, like, I couldn't figure out any other way to explain it to her. Like, here's the number you need to call. I don't have anything to do with your flight. Like, I'm so sorry that happened. But I do you have an issue with your credit card? Exactly. <laughs> because I can help you with that. Well, it's like the bitch I had. We had those massive snowstorms at the end of 2006 mm-hmm. over Thanksgiving. Yes. In Colorado that, like, shut down the state. Yeah. They declared a state of emergency because, like, livestock were dying. Yeah. In droves because nobody could get out to, like feed them they were stuck like i mean it was just a nightmare yeah. of a time the call center was shut down for a couple days yeah yeah like, which rarely happened yeah and it was like what the fuck and this woman called a few weeks later and wanted to cancel her airline card that she had with us because her flight had been canceled and we were in i was in the retention department on the phones at the time and it was like okay there are certain things, if if we have done something to you, yes, I can try to offer you something, yeah. but it, it needs to be kind of in line with what has happened. Not an happened. act of God. Right. And that was, I was like, I can't offer you something for an act of God, ma'am. And she wanted to cancel her card. And I was like, okay, what can I offer this woman? So finally I was like, okay, I'll shut down your card. And she, there was like this long pause and she was like, well, you could have offered to lower my interest rate or something. And I was like, if you wanted a lower right, interest rate. Right, because we couldn't. That was the thing. In the retention department, you couldn't proactive. You had to ask questions mm-hmm. and get them to say what they wanted. Exactly. Because we couldn't proactively say, well, we want to keep you because that was that's kind of shysty. And right? I probably could have said, okay, well, how can we make this right? But honestly, right, right. it was so ridiculous. What can and we I do was to just make this like, card work better for you? But we were new to it then. Absolutely. We didn't it know. Was a brand new retention department. Right. You remember? Right. I was one of the first reps. Yep. It was in the first yeah. few weeks. And now looking back, you know, you could have said, well, what can we do to make this card work better for you? Probably. You know? But at the time, I was just like, fuck or what you. What do you, uh, so I, I can't to... fucking help it. It snowed, stupid. If you want a lower interest rate. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I got this hook on the side of my desk where I hang, where I hang my, my, my earphones. <laughs> and Tanya just hung her phone with her little ring on it that <laughs> was on the back of her phone. On it. There you go. Yeah. Oh, my God. But I was just like, if you wanted a lower interest rate, you could have asked me for a lower interest rate. Right, right. We, we couldn't do that then. You couldn't just start throwing out offers. No. What do we call it? Offer? What do we call it? We called it something like tossing. Save attempts. Or oh. The, oh, yeah. Tossing offers or whatever we yeah. called it. Yeah. Where we just started throwing God, shit out. Did we can I that? lower your interest rate? Can I? Can I? Didn't g- we call it like kitchen sink offers? I where can't we're just remember. It was just like, yeah. We just, when we just went in and didn't ask any questions, we didn't probe. We didn't do anything. We just started throwing shit at them, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, I can lower your interest rate. Hey, I can give you points. Hey, I can do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no. We, we just. We weren't allowed. We weren't allowed to, allowed do, to do that. So I was just like, all right, whatever, yeah. bitch. Yeah. All right. All right. So this is from The Jerk. The Jerk. The Jerk. Uh, from the UK. Ah. Huh. All right. Now, this call, I have no I, I know for a fact I have told this story before. But I think this story that I'm going to share after I share this one is was one of our very first episodes. Uh-huh. Um, so it's been a minute. So I'm going to share it again because it's funny. But And this reminded me of it. But this is from The Jerk. It's my last day working at an incoming call center, and I've decided not to tolerate the the usual range of ignorant, rude customers. (laughs) I I think everybody who works in a call center, if they know they're going to quit the like the last day or so, they just lose their shit and start saying, "Yeah, yeah." I had a guy. This isn't the story I was going to share, but I had a guy who I was friends with at uh, the the cell phone company I worked Mm -hmm. for that used to say that if he and he had these two giant bull mastiff dogs Uh i mean these beasts uh, that were his (laughs) babies right and i loved them they were beautiful beautiful dogs but Mm -hmm. they were they weren't trained to be they were nice but whenever we would go over to his house to like drink and stuff it was very much like don't make any sudden movements around the dogs and it was always he let you know like these aren't cuddly dogs eventually once they warmed up to you and they knew you they were but ooh, it took a minute but he used to say that if he won the lottery he was going to come into work one day in a bathrobe with a cooler of beer and his dogs and he was going to like prop his feet up on the 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 cooler and drink a beer (laughs) And talk to customers how he felt they deserved to be talked to. 
And if you wanted him to leave, you had to get through the dogs. That was his goal. But I'm going to finish out my shift. (laughs) Fuck you. That made me laugh. I was like, okay. So the day starts off fine, but eventually I get a bite. (laughs) I love it. I answer with the same script I have used since day one. Hello. Thank you for calling blah, blah, blah company. My name is the jerk. How can I help? The caller is, is some cranky old lady who speaks in the most indignant and sarcastic tone. Well, I want to order a product, obviously. Nope. I just disconnect the call. (laughs) Sometime later, I had a guy moaning about a voucher that wasn't working. I offered a solution, but he started to raise his voice and demand that I offer more on top. Cut that call right off as well. (laughs) Jesus Christ. The last one was some lady wanting to locate her order. The call started off nice enough. I checked the order, explained our delivery policy. Her order had, had a delivery deadline of noon. She was calling at 11.10 a.m., so I couldn't offer her any help until after that time. Like, you're still within the window, right, bitch, right? Okay. So I couldn't offer any help until after that time. She immediately changed tone and began to moan and blame me as if I had any real control over what our courier company does. I just listened to her rant for a moment and then ended the call. Normally, I wouldn't dream of doing this, but when it's my last day, sometimes it feels so good to be able to let shitty customers know exactly how much their quote-unquote problems mean to me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, I, I heard a call the other day that was should have been maybe a two-minute call. Mm-hmm. That lasted 12 minutes and 46 seconds because this dumb old bitch. Uh-oh. Well, what kind of ribs do you have? Do you have full rack or half rack? Well, what kind of sauce do you have? Well, wait a minute. How much does that cost? Okay, well, what if I get this instead? I mean, and then every time they would try to tell her, well, I don't want to spend that much. The bitch, you just don't want no fucking ribs then, right? Yeah. Like, shut the, go home. Don't, you don't get to go out to eat. Right. Like, this lady was so fucking obnoxious. Ugh. Twelve and a half minutes this person spent on the phone, and finally I pulled him off the phone afterwards, and I was like, first off, Good yeah. job for good job to you yeah, because you handled that call like a boss. And I know there were times in the call when you were probably like flipping your screen off, like, mm-hmm. oh my God, what is this lady's problem? Yeah. I said, you know, and I tried to coach the person like to, to get a little more control of the call and stuff. But this lady, like we have a feature in our system where I can butt in on their call. Oh, it's called barge. I can barge in on their call. <laughs> yeah. I like that. And I was so tempted a few times after the lady t- flip like, flops. Well, okay, then I'll get the I'll get two full racks. Oh my god, $46. Well, go ahead and get one full rack and then what kind of potatoes do you have? I mean, just going on and on and I wanted to barge in and be like, "Ma'am, go look at a menu." Yeah. Go online or go to the restaurant and get a fucking menu. Yeah. It's not that hard. So, here is the story for that I know I've shared before, but damn it, it's still one of my fucking favorites. I love this goddamn story. <laughs> It was, we had an agent, we'll call him Sean, on, uh, it was his last night. And he was a young guy, and he was very jovial and very charming and just a nice kind of kid. A little cocky, you could see, a little cocky, but Mm -hmm. for the most part, very nice kid, right? It was his last night. And every night at that call center, this is back in the day, every night our main system would go down. Because I worked the closing, sh- like the late shift, right. to one thirty in the morning. Every night at around midnight, our main system would go down and basically re... T- it- this is back in the day where the comp- it- the only reason I found out years later, the only reason that system had to go down every night for one hour was for the system to tell itself it's tomorrow. <sighs> okay, fine. So during that, for the late shift that I worked... For that like half hour it was down, we were in our back end system, Mm -hmm. which was a very rudimentary system that you could see some things, but you couldn't do shit. Right. So for that half hour every night, you pretty much had to be like, yeah, system's down. Call back. Yeah. Right. And you had to be nice about it. Yeah. Okay, fine. So this gentleman, this is literally like his last call before... He He's quits. But, like, we know it's his last night, right? Yeah. And this little old man he had on the phone wanted a credit. And we can't do anything. Right. We can't even see shit. And he's like, you're going to have to call back. Right? And this little old man was just not having it at all. Right? So, finally, 
Sean puts him on speaker because it's slow at this time of night, right? Yeah. So we got a team of about 10 agents where he's kind of sitting in the middle and we're, we can all listen to him now. Right. And we're all just kind of laughing at him trying to like systems down, systems right, down, systems right. down. Finally, he's like, all right, sir, I'll tell you what. Battle wrap me for your credit. And the guy's like, what? And he's like, come on, sir. Step up to the mic and murder me on wax and I'll give you your credit. <laughs> I would die. I would die. Like, absolutely. We were roaring. I mean, we were Step just. Step up to the mic, murder me on wax, wax, and I'll give you your credit. And he starts beatboxing, right? Jesus Christ. So then the guy's like, oh, oh, oh. Now, you got to remember, this is like one in the morning, midnight, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, oh, my grandson makes those noises. Let me go get him. He go wakes this poor kid up. I have no idea how old this kid is. And he's like, you you do this with him and he'll give me my credit. And he's like, you can tell the grandkid is half awake. Like, what the what fuck? The Am I dreaming? Like, what is this? Right. Finally, the dude gets annoyed and he's like, what's your name? He's like, John. He doesn't say Sean. He says, John. And he's like, John, what? And we weren't allowed to give out last names. But he says, Doe. And this little old man says, I'm going to call back and I'm going to speak to a supervisor and I'm going to tell them that John Doe wanted me to battle wrap him for a credit. <laughs> and all I could think was the call with the supervisor just being like, wait a minute, sir. Let me get this straight. You're telling me. <laughs> right. And back then they and really the didn't have a lot of ways to go back and listen to the calls. And during that time, like, it, yeah, no. So I could just hear the supervisor like, sir, have you been drinking? Right. You're telling me that a, a, an agent of ours told you that they would give you a credit if you battle wrapped him. And that agent's name is John Doe. Right. Is okay, there somebody sir. there to help you? I know. <laughs> Do we need to call for like a welfare check from the police? <laughs> I like, know, I am truly concerned what about you. What's going on here? <laughs> but I'll never step up to the mic and murder me on wax and I'll give you your credit. <laughs> murder me on wax. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, oh my god it's still to this day it was one of those moments that you're like this is amazing <laughs> so this is the last one we'll do on this episode um this is from freddie h from the netherlands Ooh, the netherlands i don't have an accent for you i'm sorry i don't know what a netherlands no i don't but isn't that where like. gunther was from or he could speak uh on friends <laughs> <gasps> guess what sophia got me what she got me an early Mother's Day present. She got me a lobster mirror. <gasps> no. She's <laughs> her lobster. He's her lobster. All right. So Freddie H. from the Netherlands says, I work for the customer service department of a big Dutch web shop. I have an irate customer who keeps on screaming that their new Xbox 300 hasn't arrived. Track and Trace says it was delivered, but the customer insists it was not. When something that big goes missing, we need to inform the losses department who will contact the carrier and will investigate the issue. I inform the client that I will be doing that and they, they'll hear about it in the coming five days. Most of the time packages just show up and it was a faulty registration. Anyway, it's the end of my workday, so I sign off to go home. On my way out, I pass a, pass a colleague who has an irate customer. When he confirms the address... I realize he's talking to that same customer, right? Since I know this will be his last call as well before he's off shift, I decide to wait for him so we can complain about the customers together. <laughs> Misery loves company. Right. Okay. He finishes the call and waits for the client to hang up. We're only allowed to hang up if people forget to do so. He uses this time to add notes to the case, which mm -hmm. a lot of people do. Suddenly, my coworker grabs his headphones, his eyes widen, his mouth falls open, and then I see the line disconnect. And I say, are you okay? And my coworker says, they, oh my gosh. I say, what? And he said, they thought they already hung up. Oh my gosh, you'll never guess what I heard. And I say, what? And the coworker says that, that the customer said, there, now we'll have a free Xbox for sure. <gasps> oh. Guess which recorded call was passed through to the fraud department and guess which delivery address was banned forever alongside the customer's good. account good uh-huh don't be fucking shady right i hate that when people think that they have hung up 
and then they start saying stuff. Mm -hmm. For one, I used to catch my stupid ass ex husband on in shit all the time because he didn't know how to fucking because he was too high. Right. He didn't know how to hang up a phone properly. So I used to catch him in all kinds of shit, uh -huh. and I would be like, uh. What the fuck are okay, you doing? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so. Make sure you hang up. Make sure you hang up. I like, I'm a freak about it. Like I, yeah. because I thought I put somebody on hold one time mm -hmm. and I called the guy a fucking Fruit Loop. <laughs> and I was like, this person's a fucking Fruit Loop. And they heard me. I came back and they had heard me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. There was a call going around the call center for the cell phone company I worked for. that ev Everybody was passing around because it was fucking every supervisor and manager and i got to listen to it because i was mm -hmm. a senior at the time and they were like check this shit out <laughs> i was like okay it's a very contentious call between a, a male agent and a female customer and mm -hmm. she's just being a snotty bitch and then eventually she asked for a supervisor and instead of just getting the supervisor he decides to be a dick right and he goes um what would you like to speak to a supervisor about? Oh, like in God. this like sickeningly sweet tone that was just designed to antagonize her. Right. Right. And right. she's like, you know what I want to speak to a supervisor about. Thank you. If you will get one for me, I would really appreciate it. And she See? matches his snotty right. little tone. Right. Right. And he goes, okay, please hold. He goes to hold, doesn't hold and goes, bitch. And she goes, I heard that asshole. And click, and she hung, he hung up on her, <laughs> and he got. He I got, heard that asshole. It was just like oh, I heard that asshole. <laughs> I'll never forget the way she said that. It was like, oh my god. I'm telling you, people will say, she, like I've heard him say stuff. Like I told you a couple weeks ago, my agent um, took an order for a customer, and then at the end of the call, the customer was like, oh, we got a stupid black guy or something. You know, and I was just yeah. like, oh. and my agent heard it, and I was just like, I am so sorry. Well, like, you remember that agent why? that I had that call that I'm listening to, and before the call, it was a collections call. It was very contentious, and the the customer just hung up, and before the, the recording, dis the customer didn't hear her, but before the recording disconnected, the agent said, man, I hate black people. And yeah. it was like, <gasps> Right. Why? And I remember, remember our site director just came back from having a heart attack. Yeah. I went over to Carly and was like, here's what happened. And Carly just took me, she didn't say a word. She just took me by the arm and she was like, here we go. And we walked yeah. into his office, yeah. told him what happened. He started throwing pens right. and then he was like, what agent? And I told him and he was like, well, she's black. And I said, I know. And he was like, that doesn't make it any better or worse. I don't know why I did it. And he like freaked out and started screaming. And I was like, yeah, please ah. don't have another heart attack, sir. I know. That's why I was like, I need you to breathe. Right. I'm going to kill my site director. Jesus right. Christ. Right. Yeah. I mean, you hear stuff. People people say things to people who work in customer service, especially on the phone, because people they have would never big say. phone balls. People have big phone balls. Just like yes, they, have they big do. big internet balls. Telephone tough guys. And they really think they can get away with anything. I remember when I was working for, this was a prepaid cell phone company. Mm -hmm. And this lady was mad because she wanted some, I forget what it even was. And she probably had used up all her fucking minutes and wanted more. Right. And as a courtesy, sometimes we would give them 15 minutes so they could make a call or whatever. Right. right? Um, but I wasn't, I, she had hadn't so, she had had so many. Mm -hmm. And so she threatened me. She was like, I'm going to come kick your ass. Da, 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 da. And I was like, well, I'm in Colorado. You're in Indiana. Do you want to come here? Or do you want to meet halfway? <laughs> like, what do you want to fucking do? Like, like I don't balls with me. Right. Right. You know, I mean, people say things to you mm -hmm. that they would never say to you in person. Cause I can guarantee if you saw me in person, you wouldn't do it. You would not talk to me the way that you're talking to me. There you go. You know, those are our life lessons for this dick. week. Don't be a dick. Keep sending those stories to Q's and Cucumber at Yahoo.com. Make sure to like and subscribe and review and do all that fun stuff. So I think we're going to wrap this one up and we'll record another one for next week. Yay. But we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. So until next time, <laughs> Tanya just noticed something new in my office. And she's <laughs> I very did. Confused. It just really threw me the fuck up. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I got distracted. Squirrel. <laughs> So until next time, I'm Laura Mack. And I'm Tanya Edwards. Love your faces. Smooches. Like what you hear? Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcasting platform. And follow us on our Facebook page by searching Q is in Cucumber. Don't forget to check out our other show, hosted by me and Jessica James, called The Parent Memoirs. And we want to hear from you. 
Share your stories by emailing us at qisincucumber at yahoo.com and you might just hear your stories on a future episode. Love your faces. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance.